Welcome to another video. We have an integral, an indefinite integral of a bunch of e to the something. And it's it is not a rational function, even though it is in the form of a rational function. Remember, partial fraction decomposition only works when you have a rational function. This is not a rational function because a rational function must be a polynomial divided by a polynomial. This is not a polynomial. This is not a polynomial. So you cannot do partial fraction decomposition. So what would we do? Well, one option is to convert this into a polynomial. How do you do that? You do a u substitution. We'll have to write it as a polynomial in order to be able to see what else we can do. So the most important question now is what should be your u? Should it be the whole of the denominator? Should it be e to the 2x or should it be e to the x? Now, if we take e to the 2x as our u, definitely can be this because it doesn't help us, can be the whole thing. But if we take e to the 2x, the derivative of e to the 2x is 2e to the 2x. So we're going to have, but well, how will we write this in terms of u? It's going to become, we're going to start having square roots in the denominator. That becomes more complicated. So why don't we try e to the x? The derivative of e to the x is going to be e to the x. But what we have here is e to the 2x. Well, we can split this e to the 2x into e to the x, e to the x, and take one of them and leave one of them and leave it as u. <laughs> Let's get into the video. In order to make what I explained clearer, I am going to try to rewrite the numerator of this integrand. So we're going to have this is equal to the integral of e to the x times e to the x. This is the new e to the 2x. And I'm going to write this as e to the x squared plus 4e to the x plus 3. Now this it is easier now to see what I'm saying. Now if we make this our u, e to the x is u, we can replace all e to the x's with u and the derivative of e to the x will be e to the x dx. So let's do our u substitution. u sub tells us we say let u be e to the x so that du will be e to the x dx. And this is it, e to the x dx becomes our u. So what we have here is equal to the integral of, we're gonna have this left, which is u over, this is u squared, plus this is 4u, and this is plus three. And e to the x dx is replaced by du. And now we have a beautiful integral to compute. Now. What can you do with this? Remember, can you do a u substitution? It's actually possible, you know? If we take the derivative of this, it's going to be 2u plus 4. Um, that means we have to add 4 to this, and then we're still going to go back and break it down. Don't do double job, okay? What I would recommend is you should... Oh, because this is factorable. We can factor this, do partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so this is going to be equal to the integral. This is going to be u over u. If I factor, this is going to be u plus 3 and u plus 1 du. Okay, so the factored form is here, so I know because it's factorable, partial fraction decomposition is my best friend in this case. So I am going to now break this down into two fractions. So let's work on that. Let's ignore this. We'll come back. Let's say this is i. Okay, so let's say that's i. So we know that u over u plus 3 times u plus 1 
will be equal to, we're going to break it down into two, because these two are linear, our work is going to be super easy. That's going to be u plus 3 plus b over u plus 1. Now, there's a method for partial fraction decomposition that I learned when I was in secondary school. And it's called the cover-up method. I think I'm going to make a whole video about it. Okay? Now, the cover-up method is so sweet. Because what it tells you is that, that I'm just going to focus on this. For the cover-up method, don't worry about B. Just focus on A. If I cover up U plus 3 and I plug in negative 3. See, negative 3 is what makes this 0. So if I plug in negative 3 here, my answer is going to be negative 3 over negative 3 plus 1, which is going to be 3 over 2. I just found my A by the cover-up method. This always works when you have linear function, linear factors like this. Okay? I know there are many other methods, but that's the fastest way to get it. For me, the cover-up method, uh, it's sweet. Now, the, let's do B. What would I plug in here to make it zero? It's going to be one, right? I mean, negative one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go cover up this here. So if I cover up u plus one and I plug in negative one here, my answer is going to be negative one over negative one plus three. That's going to be negative one over two. That's it. So I'm done. So I can go back to my integral and say, I, <laughs> that's so quick, right? Okay, so I go back, I say i is equal to the integral of u over u plus 3, u plus 1, which is equal to the integral of a. Actually, we already found what a is. What is a? We said a is um, 3 over 2, so it's going to be, yes, 3 over 2 divided by u plus 3, negative 1 over 2, divided by u plus 1. And all of this, there's nothing special. We just need to integrate each of these. Remember, we're going to, we can pull this three halves down, and then we find the natural log of this. That's it. That's your answer. So here we're going to say our answer is 3 over 2 times the natural log of u plus 3. Okay, and we say plus. You pull this one half back, it's going to be minus one half of the natural log of u plus 1 plus c. The only thing is we need to go back and replace u with what u was in the first place. What was u? u is e to the x. So we just go back here and say the answer, our original, is going to be 3 over 2 times the natural log of e to the x plus 3. e to the x is always positive. This is always positive, so we don't need the absolute value sign. We're just going to write it this way. Minus, it's going to be 1 half of the natural log of e to the x plus 1. This also is always positive, and we give it the cup of c. Let's go. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.